What's up, everyone? I hope you all had a great start to the week. About 62% of stocks in the S&P 500 finished in the red today, so it wasn't uh, too crazy of a day for the overall market, but a handful of individual stocks turned on the Jets. Ticker symbol RDDT, uh, the new IPO of Reddit, uh, just popped up by 30% today off a of big volume and some pretty crazy movement, so we're definitely going to touch on that, but even ticker symbol DWAC, which is True Social, had a pretty big day as that popped up by 35%. So of course, we're going to talk about these stocks. We're also going to touch back on uh, some of the marijuana stocks that went crazy on Friday and some other important things to know for tomorrow. This week, while it is a short one because of the holiday, should be pretty exciting given uh, some of the crazy movement we've seen over the past couple of days. So stick with us all the way until the end. We have a lot of great setups and predictions for tomorrow. But Tom, let's jump right into it. Yeah, the overall market had a pretty big drop this morning. Once the market opened, it started to recover back up a little bit. But as you can see, the SPY actually fell end of day and started going slightly lower. And I'm getting a little bit worried, Mike. You know, we're seeing stocks like Apple, Meta, some of these bigger tech stocks are looking a little bit weaker here in the short term but you know going off that weakness let's get into some stocks that are actually moving like reddit which you mentioned which ipo just a couple days ago at least a couple trading days ago and they ran up 30 percent today like this is one of the biggest movers of the day ran almost up to 63 dollars and another honorable mention is even coinbase up 9.47 percent i know crypto was on fire today bitcoin got all the way back up to 71,000 at the end of the day so we're seeing some good movement out there mike and uh, uh, take advantage in, in these short-term opportunities, especially on stocks like Coinbase and Reddit. No doubt. And with stocks like these ones, it is all a game of momentum. When you see the stocks breaking new high of days and running with uh, good volume and just bullish price action, uh, it brings on even more buyers as the stock keeps going up. And, you know, even more here, more people hear about the stock, which makes more people buy it. And it just creates this upward snowball effect and creates uh, the price action, just like we saw today with Reddit. So keep a close eye on these ones. It's all a game of momentum with them. And and Reddit and uh, Coinbase are not the only ones. Tom, ticker symbol DWAC also had a pretty crazy day as well. And that one popped up even more than Reddit. Yeah, it's up 35%. We all know that DWAC, or at least you should know by now with how popular it's been over the past couple of years, at least how much news it gets. Uh, it's, a, it's a SPAC, right? Uh, we, it's for Truth Social. And what's going on is it's actually going to be changing tickers tomorrow, which is pretty insane, to DJT, which stands for like Donald John Trump. So uh, watch out, guys. You know, we're not trying to get too political here, but at the end of the day, uh, Dwack is having some great movement. It's up 35%. Uh, and there was even some news today where like Trump had their bond, had his bond cut down a little bit. So that could end up playing a bit of a role. Like we said, not trying to get overly political with it, but at the end of the day, Dwack is having an amazing run. And we go out to the daily chart. It started really moving back at the beginning of the year. It's starting to push those highs again. Will it be up, up above 58, pushing 60 soon? It just might if it has a few more days like this. Yep, and the same thing uh, goes for this one. It is all a game of momentum. When the stock is breaking highs in a powerful way and constant pressure is put on that high of day, it brings on even more and more buying pressure. So the stronger it is, the uh, more explosive potential there is. But as soon as that momentum gives out, that's when you have to be a little bit uh, careful with a setup like this one. So keep a close eye on this stock over the next couple days. But Tom, if I told you uh, one stock or one area of the market that is truly going ballistic, you might think it might be something with cryptocurrencies or uh, chip stocks or anything AI related. But instead, the price of cocoa or chocolate has been rising quicker than literally anything else. As we can see on this chart right now, it has been like a straight line up for like basically as far as you can go back. And I saw this article today that uh, from Business Insider says, cocoa prices are rising so fast 
they are outpacing Bitcoin. <laughs> so that uh, that shows you that there's a lot of inflows with this one. And while there's not necessarily like an easy way to trade this type of price action, one stock that will be worth watching is Hershey's ticker symbol HSY, if we do see these cocoa prices finally pull back, that'll definitely allevi alleviate a lot of the stress and pressure on a, uh, you know, pretty big chocolate company like Hershey's. So uh, keep a close eye on it over the next couple of days. It's uh, pretty rare to see the price of chocolate outpace the price of Bitcoin. <laughs> it really is. And Bitcoin is no slouch either lately. Like over the past year or so, Bitcoin's been going up quite a bit, but it looks like chocolate or cocoa is actually beating it out. So uh, that's pretty insane to see like how strong this daily chart is, Mike. It almost reminds me of metals like during the COVID crisis, how we saw steel and uh, wood even, you know, going up in a pretty crazy way. So we'll have to keep our eyes on cocoa. Uh, HSY, I was kind of expecting them to be doing a little bit better, Mike, but I guess the high prices are scaring people away. Yep, you know it. And Tom, it finally happened. The CEO of Boeing decided to use his open door policy and step down. Uh, this news came out uh, today where uh, there's definitely a pretty big shakeup happening at Boeing where the CEO will be stepping down towards the end of 2024 and some uh, other high ranking members are already gone. And I know uh, some people were like, yeah, it's about time after all the disastrous uh, things that have been happening with this company over the past couple of months. Yeah, and the other CEO of the commercial airplane unit's gone effective immediately. That's one of those other guys that you mentioned. I mean, what's been having problems lately? Those commercial airplanes, right? <laughs> so it's been brutal for Boeing. I know that uh, looking at their chart, it's also been brutal on the daily. They had recent highs up around like 268. They were actually recovering a lot. Now, since that high to where they are now today at close, they're down around 28%. It's been one hell of a ride to the downside. We've been watching this one like a hawk as it broke under $200 recently as well. But yeah, it's about time, Mike. You know, I, I think a lot of people are going to be happy in the comments for this one. Exactly. And Boeing stock popped up by like 1.5% today, which is good. But at the same time, everyone knows deep down, there's still a whole lot of work that still needs to be done. And you can see in pre-market, the stock shot up initially and everyone's like, why are we celebrating? <laughs> like, there's still a lot more to do. So, you know, I guess this is like a, a first good step for Boeing where maybe they're taking the step in the right direction. But I think uh, over the next couple of months, this one will just be best, like, uh, just watching on the sidelines. And if, like, things materially change with the company, then that would change, like, the, the route, uh, I guess you could say, um, opinion with it. But for me, for now, I'm staying on the sidelines. Yeah, and I mean, let's be real here. Like, these poor CEOs and the guys on the board, like, it, you know, I'll be real. Like, obviously, their product is having issues, right? But in, in these companies, somebody always has to take the fall, you know? And it seems like that these guys are kind of having that happen. So I, I think I'm with Mike here. Uh, I'm really watching that $200 level in the short term. If we see a rejection off that, I, I'm still looking at it to the downside, honestly. All right, sounds good. So, Tom, as I talked about a little bit in the intro, we are actually in for a short trading week. Uh, the market will be closed on Friday for Good Friday, so keep that in mind. And uh, let's make this week count because uh, it's shorter than uh, usual. Uh, and then on another, another thing worth noting, Tom, is uh, earnings is kind of dead this week, but we do have some stocks starting to move in a pretty exciting way, uh, like GameStop. They report after close tomorrow, and I saw them having a nice uh, pre-earnings run. They really were. This stock was on fire today, up around 15%. There were a few of these, like, uh, I guess you'd call them small caps or meme stocks, etc., that were on fire. And seeing them up 15% ahead of earnings was definitely awesome to see there. So keep your eyes on GameStop, Carnival Cruise Lines Wednesday. But that's really it, Mike. Besides that, I mean, what else is there? Walgreens? <laughs> nothing, Tom. <laughs> Seriously, nothing. So, um, okay, I guess we'll, we'll skip the rest of the earnings stuff because it's just uh, kind of a dead week for that. But uh, what what else is uh, on the schedule for the uh, economic calendar? Yeah, so we do have quite a bit. The GDP growth rate on Thursday. And then while the markets close Friday, keep in mind, there's no trading Friday for Good Friday. Like we mentioned, we're going to get those PCE numbers and then Powell will actually be speaking that day. So, Mike, I'll definitely be watching the market very closely Sunday night into Monday. 
Sounds good. All right, Tom. Well, we are now in the clear for the good stuff, which are some setups and predictions for tomorrow. A stock I'm still watching very closely is Apple, and it's to the downside. So they are getting sued by the Department of Justice, and it has been pretty weak ever since this lawsuit was like officially announced, which was on Thursday. Um, I am looking at it to the downside, and I would love to see a break below of like $169 and like 50 cents or so. I just want to see consistent bearish price action and constant pressure on that low of day. That's the most important thing with this one. I want to see a flush lower and then just like a, uh, you know, kind of, I want to see everyone run for the exits all at once, at least for a short term trade. And Tom, maybe if we're lucky enough, if this one falls enough, it might uh, maybe be uh, at the right price for a long term position as well. Yeah, definitely could. I'm watching Apple over the next few months. Like if it starts to break these supports and get back down into a decent range, like maybe like the 140 to 160 area, that'll definitely start to pique my interest a little bit more. So I'll definitely be watching Apple though to the downside in the short term. Looks pretty good. It seems like the negative news just keeps coming in. With my first play, I'm going back to Dwack. I'm definitely watching this one in the short term. Uh, nothing too crazy with, uh, I would say like the company for the long term. Like I'm not necessarily looking to buy this and hold this for shares but for a short-term trade like a breakout tomorrow above 53 could end up being pretty good it was up 35 percent today and seems like there's pretty good news in the short term but keep in mind it will be trading as djt tomorrow not dwac so don't be confused by that Good stuff, Tom. All right, another stock I'm watching pretty closely is CGC. So we talked about this stock and uh, other marijuana stocks a bunch yesterday. They are moving in a giant way right now and in both directions. So while this stock popped up by, I believe, like 68% on uh, Friday, it also fell by 19% today. So it's definitely moving in big in both directions and that is normal and it's expected right we're talking about a marijuana company that is super volatile right but I am continuing to watch this one to the upside but what's more important than anything else is the type of price action that we see I want to see constant pressure on that high of day I want to see a lot of volume flowing in and I just want to see the same level of strong bullish momentum that we saw with this stock on Friday if we see anything similar to that going forward whether it's tomorrow or on Thursday or whenever, that is where I see opportunity with the stock. Um, when the stock is doing nothing or just chopping around or chopping lower, I don't really care about it. But when it's starting to, you know, have that upwards like exponential price action, that's where I get excited and that's where I see opportunities. So I'm watching this one to the upside, but I want to see that good bullish price action before we, uh, you know, look at it for an actual entry. Yeah, and I mean, if we look at the daily chart, there's that big red candle today. Like, there could definitely still be more uptrend here. I know a lot of people might start to give up on it with that with the way it's looking right now. But let's go back to the beginning of the other huge uptrend that happened. Like, look at this big red candle that came in. I'm sure that scared a lot of people out that day. But look at the net at the following next few days and couple weeks. Ended up seeing some great movement. So I'll definitely still be watching these MJ stocks, Mike. I'm with you on CGC. With my next play, I'm going with a more boring one, which is Moderna, but it was actually up 4.7% today. It had a great end of day run all the way up to 110. We go out to the daily chart. It's also starting to point up in a very nice way. So I'll be looking for a breakout tomorrow above like 110.50, when maybe 110.75, and then a push maybe to like 114, 115. So that's what I'm looking at for Moderna. They're starting to point back up, and it's good to see the healthcare stocks moving. Yeah, I like to see it. And as you mentioned, right around that like $115 area, that is like a, uh, it's a pretty decent level of resistance. And if we do eventually see a break above that, this one can have a pretty nice run. Now, I think it would be relatively unlikely for it to break 115 tomorrow, but like over like the next couple of days, maybe even in the next week, we might see a break above that. So I definitely like it. Yeah, I like it a lot too, Mike. And if we do break 115, like you mentioned, that could be awesome. And I actually saw that that was a great level on the book map. There was a ton of shares stacked up there today. You can see like 42,000 shares towards the end. Maybe not as much shares as you'll see on something like Apple or Tesla or something. But still with Moderna, that 115 resistance will be huge. So I'll definitely watch that over the next few days as well. But for tomorrow, just really watch like 110.75. 
All right, sounds good. Well, it's now about that time for the momentum plays. And with today's first one, we have Meta to the downside. M-E-T-A, bad news today and another drop to the downside here. If they end up falling under $500 even, then go ahead and look at puts. That's a major whole dollar level. All right, with the next one, we have a China stock, Baidu to the upside, which had a decent day today. Yeah, Baidu, pretty good. I saw a few China stocks that did decently well today, at least. Go ahead and make them break above 106.25 tomorrow morning. All right, and then with the last one, we have Amazon for both directions. AMZN, I actually like this setup quite a bit today. If it breaks out above 181, then go ahead and eye up calls, but there was a good intraday support, very close to 179.20. So if it breaks under there, then eye up puts. Sounds good. So we have the downside level there for Amazon. We have the upside level as well. Don't forget about the upside level with Baidu and then the downside level with Meta. We are watching these three stocks for potential day trades tomorrow if and only if they break through the levels Tom listed. For the upside stocks, we want to see them break above the levels and continue higher. And for the downside ones, we want to see the stock break below the level and continue lower. We want to see strong, you know, momentum filled price actions and or price action and continuations in the directions listed but we also had a pretty exciting big money trade today and while it's not as exciting as yesterday's uh what was it like a 13 or 13 million dollar trade with ALNY uh this one is uh pretty interesting and it's with ticker symbol NEE -E, and it is a five hundred and seventy six thousand dollar trade with the NEE -E, 60 strike call options that expire on September 20th of 2024. Um, we have seen a bunch of great inflows into the energy industry over the past couple of weeks. We've been talking about energy stocks in a pretty bullish way for a while now. And these stocks have been moving uh, pretty good like over like the past couple of weeks to the upside. Uh, ticker symbol NEE -E has also been uptrending in a nice way. The 60 strike call options are in the money. They have time to them. And then also given the geopolitical risk we have at hand with, uh, you could say, Russia and then everything going on in the Middle East, as well as the time of the year we're in where uh, energy prices tend to rise, it definitely makes this setup pretty interesting. I like it overall. I don't think it's like the craziest setup that we've ever talked about ever, but I definitely don't think it's bad either. You know, the energy industry has been seeing a lot of great inflows and I'm curious to see how this one does. Yeah, I think it's awesome. It's the 60 strike calls. It's fairly safe. You know, they're in the money. Now, NEE is actually like right at resistance right now, but we are seeing these energy stocks go nuts. Whether we go look at XLE, like an energy fund, or we go look at ZOM or Oxy or any of the oil stocks, we're seeing energy do very, very well. So I'll definitely keep my eyes on this one. It's a pretty good big money play on NEE. Just keep your eyes on that overhead resistance. Uh, if it breaks that in the short term, I think it could be a great potential entry to follow. And uh, even for a short-term opportunity, if this resistance starts giving out pretty well, it could start to get pretty awesome. All right, there we go. All right, Tom, but we can't move any further until we give a giant shout-out to today's member of the day, FG30 in the Stocked Up Discord. He hit it out of the park today with uh, some of his energy uh, plays, like with Exxon Mobil, where uh, he just crushed it today. You can see he's overall up uh, 56, or you could say just under $57,000 on the total position, but today he made just under 14000 So huge shout out to you, FG. Keep up the great work, and it's awesome to see posts like this one. Uh, if you guys are into short term trading, check out the stocked up trading floor. It is the place to be. We have everything you could possibly need. You'll get full access to our army of trading robots. You can chat with town myself all day long. You get full access to our live events and all of the past recordings of them. You get full access to the big money trades on the same day that the big money takes them. So a lot of times you can get better entry prices. Uh, for example, ticker symbol ALNY is a stock that we talked about with the big money with a, what was it? A 13 $13 million trade and uh, you know those who are in the trading floor got access to this one before it ended up popping up by almost 4% today by close so 
If you're into short-term trading, the stocked up trading floor is the place to be. We very rarely do sales and we just started one uh, just a couple days ago. So if you want in, check out uh, the first link in the description in the comments down below. Use coupon code BIGMONEY to save on the yearly plan. Again, we don't do sales very often. So when we do them, you got to strike on them. But besides that, Tom, I love the uh, crazy price action that we're seeing in the market right now, whether it be with ticker symbol RDDT or some of these marijuana stocks or you know, even ticker symbol DWAC. I love the volatility we're seeing. Whether the market moves up or down, it makes no difference to me personally. I just want to continue to see this volatility and momentum-filled price action because is, as a short-term trader, that's all you can ask for. Uh, what sucks is when the market's doing nothing, but when we are in an environment like we've been in for like the past couple of months, it uh, really does present a ton of opportunities. So let's make this week a great one. Yeah, let's go. Some of these stocks are on fire right now. We saw some amazing plays in the Profits channel today. Make sure you guys get in there and post those up as well. But, you know, it's a short week out there, so let's make these four days count. There's some fun price action. I can't wait to see what uh, ticker symbol DJT looks like tomorrow. It's hard to remember it, Mike, because we haven't ever used it yet. <laughs> I know, right? All right, one last thing. If you are new to the channel and you like our content, consider demolishing that subscribe button. If you do, you'll get our video recommended to you more often every single day we talk about important setups important news earnings to be aware of and just everything you need to know about the market in like 20 to 25 minutes or less so consider demolishing that subscribe button but besides that thank you all so much for watching and let's crush it this week